Jazz Club. <laughs> Welcome to Big Wrist Watches. I'm your host Bart and this is the very first video of the channel. I hope there will be many more to come. I've been collecting watches since I was very young, but about five years ago the obsession really kicked off and now I have a collection which is constantly evolving. My current theme for what I call my grail box is iconic watches. Now one of my watches is the Omega Plo Prof, which is the one I'm wearing right now. Now, it is truly a legendary piece because it was developed specifically to withstand the crushing pressures endured by deep sea divers. It was launched in 1970, which famously is the era of the Comex expeditions, and it could withstand depths of up to 600 meters. Omega had a partnership with Comex and provided the Ploprof watches to the crew, while Rolex also provided their new sea dweller in a less official form. Omega developed their new diving watch from the ground up, while Rolex based their new Sea Dweller design on the Submariner, to which they added a helium escape valve to save time. A lot of people don't really believe in helium escape valves, um, but yeah, it was the uh, invention of the time. Now, the Ploprof, which is short for Plongeur Professionnel, has a case diameter of 54 millimeters. Now, that might sound large, but actually it wears quite small because uh, the height is only 45 oops, millimeters, it was correct the first time, and it's only 50 millimeters thick. Now, on my big wrist, hence the name of the channel, it all, almost disappears in my hair. Now the case is a monoblock design, as you can see, where the only entry point into the case is the crystal and obviously also the crown. The crystal is very thick and ridged, actually I have a replacement here, so that it puts pressure on two gaskets. So as you can see it has two ridges and it's very thick. It's really built like a tank. Now the big red pusher on top of the case is used for unlocking the bezel and you can use it single-handedly. So you can only turn it while the button is pressed, which uh, prevents accidental modifications uh, to the bezel. Now, sometimes you will find Ploprof watches with the crown on the right side, but these have been incorrectly uh, assembled because it no longer uh, allows single-handed operation. Now the movement is a very ubiquitous Omega 1002, which is a workhorse movement and was used in many watches of the era. Therefore it's reliable and easy and cheap to maintain and to get parts. Now aside from the Comex expeditions, the Ploprov was also made famous by Gianni Agnelli, which, uh, which was a big boss of Fiat and also a fashion icon. He is believed to be one of the founders of the Sprezzatura fashion movement and yeah, leave it to the Italians to invent, invent a word to describe the fashion of throwing together whatever works. Now he actually wore his Ploprov over his shirts and apparently it's believed that he was allergic to the metal. I bought this specific Ploprof via a friend of mine from an old watch collector who apparently has thousands of vintage watches. He was only the second owner of this watch and it is still in completely original condition. It's truly a rare treat to find a Ploprof with an original dial, hands and original bezel. But even rarer is the original 70s bracelet which you can identify by a circle 37 on the clasp. Now, you might not be able to see it in the video, but my crystal is a little bit fogged up, and so I'm dropping it off with my watchmaker, who is uh, Michiel from L'Art du Temps, to get it serviced and to get the crystal replaced. I've already sourced an original re re replacement crystal, which you saw, um, is going to made, be made completely waterproof again, and all the gaskets will be replaced, uh, because I think it's stupid to own a Ploprof and not be able to jump into the water with it. A uh, watch is meant to be worn and it's meant to be used for which it was designed. Now obviously I won't go diving with it, I'm not a diver, um, but swimming you should be able to do. Now another thing that Michiel is going to do is touch up the case because it got two nasty knocks during his life, not sure if you can see it, but it has a bump here and a bump here. Um, now, I know that a lot of people say that that's patina and it all only adds to the character of the watch, and I think it's true for scratches in general, but the problem is, is that these two bumps really um, take away from the straight edges of the watch, and so it disturbs a little bit the design. 
Uh, these days, uh, watchmakers like Michiel are able to return um, watches to factory uh, finish, basically where you can put them uh, into the showcase of a jeweler and you would never see the difference. It would, it, it's new old stock, basically. So uh, yeah, I prefer it that way. Now, um, this is one of my favorite watches because it's really an enthusiast watch. It's, it's not something um, that everybody will wear. It's also something that not everybody is able to wear, quite honestly, because it's so bold and it's so present. It's also a watch that most people will notice when you wear it because it's so uh, non-standard. It's a design that you see nowhere else and it's, it's really, it's, it's function over form, uh, which really I love because it's really a function-driven uh, design where, where aesthetics were not, uh, not, not important. Also, it was twice as expensive as a, as a sea dweller, uh, so it was a watch which was uh, not often sold. It's, it's, it's pretty rare because of that. Not a lot of Proprofs uh, have been sold. Um, and it's really a watch which has my name on it. It's big, it's bold, basically that's me. <laughs> um, and I really love it for what it is. It's also, uh, you know, you see a Submariner and I also have, have, have a Sea Dweller of, of which I will make a video maybe in the future. But you'll see a Submariner on many wrists. A lot of people buy a Rolex uh, uh, as soon as they get an important, uh, an important milestone in their life and they want to celebrate and they go buy a Rolex. But it's not often that, that um, that somebody has a, a Ploprov. You really have to be a watch enthusiast and you have to get what the Ploprov is about to wear one and, 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 uh, and, and to get one in, in, in general. And so that's, that's what I really love about the watch. Um, now, feel free to leave comments. What do you think about this watch uh, on this video? Also, be sure to give me a thumbs up. It's my very first video, so your support will matter in making uh, new videos. Uh, and also, please, if you liked it, uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll see each other again in a short while. See ya. Bye-bye.